Good morning and welcome back to Asgard and welcome to another episode of our Applied Energistics Tips and Tricks series. So if you recall last episode we automated um, a bit of Batania and there was three particular builds that we mentioned last episode that we did not do um, because they're a bit more advanced. So I decided to split those into three separate videos so this will be the first of those three and today we'll be fully automating um, Terra Steel with our Applied Energistic system and doing it in a smart way that controls um, you know how many items are dropped on the plate as well as making sure that it only runs when it has the mana to do so. So really quickly let's go ahead and set up our uh, agglomeration plate and everything just like that and we'll just throw this stuff away now we don't need that anymore um, and then what we'll want to do is let's get just some cobble any kind of block will work and kind of just block this off because um, like a lot of other Batania stuff um, when it gets done creating the Terra Steel it won't necessarily drop it back on the agglomeration plate it's just gonna kinda just toss it so it could end up um, you know kind of just anywhere if it doesn't have something around it and we are going to use a um, uh, transfer node to pick it up kind of like what we did um, with the mana pool set up so we've got that set up now so let's next put an open crate above it just like we've done in the past with things and then we'll set up an interface that will basically connect into our system um, and then use a chest to connect to that all pretty basic so far um, and now let's set up a pattern really really quickly uh, there we go oh I've already got it in here because I was playing I was playing with it earlier and I set up a design that I was very happy with it works and it's smart about it and whatnot so and we'll just throw that oh we already have one in our inventory too okay so we've got that set up now um, with our pattern now the way this will work of course it will put the um, the mana diamond the mana pearl and the mana steel into this chest and so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna tell it how to extract and how to do it in an intelligent manner so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use an emerald transport pipe and this will require power um, so any kind of power that you want to pump into it um, I'm just gonna put a creative energy cell down um, right here that'd be fine so that's getting power now so it can extract and we'll just bring this up and then we'll put a diamond transport pipe right here and then what we're gonna do is let's put another chest kind of over here off to the side um, or actually you wouldn't have to use that you could just use um, your golden transport pipes would be fine and bring those down and connect them into the interface like this and then bring another set of golden transport pipes out in this direction and then what we're going to do is we're going to set up a chest here to act as a buffer um, so that we can kind of make this a little bit more intelligent um, here in a second and then what we'll do is we'll connect this chest buffer to the open crate with item conduits and we're going to tell it to extract with a signal and insert and the reason that you want to kind of make this a little bit intelligent um, is because if you were to just say order 10 terra steel and it dumps 10 mana pearls 10 mana diamonds 10 mana steel onto this um, it's not going to do anything it will not run if it has any more than one set of the <coughs> um, the mana items on here <coughs> And then what we're going to do is, you know what I forgot to put on here is the spark. My bad. Which, that's fine because it will still drop the, the items on there. It'll drop through the spark, so that's not really an issue. And then what we'll do is we'll set up our mana pools. And we'll make a few of them here, and we'll set them up... Um, in this design because I'm gonna go ahead and set them up like this you can set them up however you want to but this is a perfect layout for a uh, mana turntable uh, so that it can feel all four of these and then what we'll do is we'll set up 
Uh, no, not timers. We're not going to use any timers for this build. Um, we're going to set up redstone comparators coming out of these mana pools. And you know what? No, actually, that'll work perfect. That's fine. And <clears throat> basically, this is going to gauge how full these are, kind of like we've set up before. And then let me grab a bookcase. And we're going to set this up pretty much the same way that we've done before. Uh, we're going to set that one there and this one here, this one here, and this one here. And what we'll do is we'll just put, um, you know, it kind of depends on your build, but we're going to say we want to give it a three redstone signal. So that way it's only going to put out a redstone signal if this has, um, you know, is three fifteenths of the way full or more. And that way we'll make sure that our system between these four mana pools has enough mana to make a Terra Steel because it does require, um, you know, half a mana pool to do that. And then we'll bring some, just some red alloy wire, whoops, out like this. And to right there and on both sides, whoops, we'll do that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to set up an AND gate. And what these do is basically they are going to look and say that it's only going to output a redstone signal if this side, this side, and this side are all getting redstone. Now, of course, we're only utilizing two of these sides for this setup. Um, you could set up more mana pools and have, you know, another side being used. But since we're not, we're just going to give it a redstone signal um, just with a lever or whatever, you know, method we want to use. And so now this should be emitting a redstone signal which you'll notice that it is. And so what we're going to do is we're going to use just some uh, redstone conduit or redstone wire or any of that will work perfectly fine for this. And we'll just connect these up. And then we'll bring them up. And we'll kind of bring them together here. And the same over here. That's too high, isn't it? And one more. And I mean, you could make this look a bit more fancy and everything if you want. I'm just setting it up pretty basic for you guys. And then what we'll do is we'll put a solid block here and set up another AND gate right there with a lever to activate this last side, connect this, connect this. So now we've got a redstone signal and it's only going to get a redstone signal if all these mana pools have mana. Now you could also use an or gate so you could say like if this one or this one or this one or this one are half full then it will run. But um, I like the and gate because I like having all four running. And by the way make sure and put your sparks on top of this. Oh, this may not work out that way. Okay. I'll tell you what we could do. Uh, let's move this. Sorry, my phone was going off. I was shutting it off real quick. Um, we'll set it up right here instead. Okay. And we'll set up our AND gate here. And then bring these in. And this will work out just fine and put our lever here to give that side a redstone signal and there we go. So now it, it needs all of these to have mana you know up to 3 fifteenths of the mana pool field in order to emit a signal. So altogether we've got over half a mana pool between the four of them. And then what we'll do is we'll just bring 
our redstone cable out from there and we'll just connect it into this and we'll go ahead and tell it strong signal and so now it's going to emit a redstone signal and allow this to extract um, you know when we have enough mana in there and only when we have enough mana and then what we can do is let me grab a couple items here from Batania Terra Steel, Mana Diamond, Mana Pearl, and Mana Steel. And we're going to set this Emerald Filter to Round Robin in order. Put our Mana Steel, our Mana Pearl, our Mana Diamond, and then our Terra Steel in there. And then up here, the blue side is going to be our Mana Steel, our Mana Pearl, our Mana Diamond, so that they'll travel in this direction. And then our green side will be the Terra Steel. So what we've done is we've told it, you know, you have to extract in this order. You have to do a Mana Steel, followed by a Mana Pearl, followed by a Mana Diamond, followed by a Terra Steel. So if it's waiting on the Terra Steel, it's not going to extract any more of these items until it gets that Terra Steel. And then what we're going to do is just go underneath here and of course right here is right above this is our agglomeration plate we'll set our transfer node for items on here and give it a couple world interactions so that way it can travel through the living rock and through the agglomeration plate to pick up the items and then we're going to set a filter in here to only pick up terra steel ingots and then we will just bring our pipes out connect them into this chest and that's about it so if we run this let's run over here and let's say order we're gonna order 10 Terra Steel we've got all the items available and it should send the items over here and you'll notice they're getting pumped out sent in the appropriate direction and we should say mana being pulled in from there and if you notice it's not sending any more items now it's created, it's going to get pumped into this chest, and it's going to get pumped out followed by another set of mana steel, mana pearls, and mana diamonds. The terra steel is going to go in this direction, get sucked into our system, and now it's pumping for another set. And we'll watch that one more time. And there we go. And it's just going to run that until it runs out of the mana, uh, the mana items, and you'll have all your Terra Steel in the system without it overloading the plate. Because, for example, um, I'll show you what happens if you don't set it up this way. And we'll just throw some of this stuff in there. Oh, I've got, never mind, I've got these items there. So if we came over here, let me break that. This is I, like the same exact build, it's just a big mess of a setup while I was playing with it. Uh, we're going to set that to extract always active. So if we were to throw like all those on there, you know, it would just start dumping just piles of the items in there. And now it'll start dumping the mana pearls. And then once it gets to the mana diamonds right now, you'll notice the agglomeration plate's not going off because there's too many items on there and it's not going to run um, unless it only has one pearl, one diamond, and one mana steel on there. So, uh, with this setup, you don't have to worry about that. It's only going to run when you have enough mana in your system. Um, it's only going to drop the items, so you don't have to worry about your items despawning. And um, this way we'll have a decent speed because we're running it with four mana pools. So, um, that's pretty much this build. Um, like I said, we'll be doing another video fairly soon on the Runic Altar. Um, as well as the um, uh, Petal Apothecary. 
so i hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did as always please comment like subscribe it's very, very much appreciated and as always if you have any questions or suggestions on things that you would like to see feel free to let me know um, we're pretty much just going through the process of automating about everything that could cause any kind of issue um, you know everything that's possible to be automated that i can come up with anyway so um, i hope you guys join me for next episode and until then please do take care and i hope to see you guys then